Hello students, uh, you welcome back to our EduB Global Solution. We're going to be looking at another topic that mathematics graphs, which is graph in practical solution. So we have uh, our illustrations of how to uh, prepare a straight line graphs, and uh, we have examples related to measurement, distance, speed, and time. And we have our uh, class activities and examples that will guide us through this uh, class. Now, we're talking about straight line graph. It, we can actually convert from one set of units to another. Examples include converting from one currency to another, converting from one distance to another, like we have in, in miles to kilometers and uh, thereabout. Now, we have an illustration here. The picture we have here is showing us how we can actually convert our uh, dollars in time frame. This is the time frame within which uh, the working hour and the dollar rate are uh, the income. So, so if you look at it, the one we have here, when the person actually working uses three hours, uh, he or she collected a $60. Uh, dollar. And that leads us to how to convert uh, in exchange for uh, uh, morning. Now we have the graph below convert South Africa rand into euro based on an exchange rate of one euro equals 8.80. Look at this, this is an illustration. Uh, if you look, this is not for three. Okay, so we have uh, less than 30 years rand. So three euro, less than three euro, less than well, this is 2.8. We have 22.8 or thereabouts as rand. So now, this is an illustration here is going to be giving us uh, some activities in our last slide, and we are going to be solving using this graph. So let's study this graph. 50 rands gives, uh, let's say we have uh, 4.8 euro. Uh, 5 euro gives, uh, uh, let's say, 44 rands, and that's how we illustrate that. So now let's look at the examples that we are going to be calculating based on this uh, graph that we have here. Okay, they said we should use the graph to A, we should have to estimate the numbers of uh, rank equivalent to what? To uh, 5 euro. Now, they have told us that 1 euro is what? 1.8.8 uh, 8 .8 rand. So, for us to get uh, 5 uh, euro, is going to be what? Uh, 5 uh, multiplied by 8.8. .8. So, we are able to get our rank here. So, it's going to be 5 uh, euro is going to be what? 5 uh, multiplied by 8.8 uh, rand. So that will give us uh, 44 rand. So 5 euros uh, gives uh, 44 uh, rand. Okay. Now the next one tells us uh, what will be the cost in euro of a drink costing 25 rand. So since we, are not, we know that 1 euro is 8.8 .8 rand, so all we just need to do is that to know the number of euros, they are going to be dividing 25 by 8.8 .8 to give us the numbers of euros that we need for the second uh, uh, question. So we have 24, 25 rounds, okay, now divided by 8.8, .8, that is going to give us the numbers of round uh, euros that we are having. So by the time we divide that, we are going to be converting that, so it's going to be giving us uh, what? Uh, 2.80 euros, so that's the cost of uh round in euro. So the next one is telling us that if a meal costs 200 rands, use the graph to estimate its cost in euro. So if uh, a meal costs 200 rands, if you look at the graph that we have there, if we don't have uh, the rands up to 200, but we can easily convert. We can, if you look at this, we said that 50 euro, 50 rands uh, will give us uh, how many euro. So 50 rands is going to give us a uh, 5.7 euro. So we have 5.7 euro. Now, since we know that 50 rands give 5.7 euro, right? Now, 200 uh, rand is going to give us what? 50 times 4 is going to, is what? It's 200. 50 times 4 gives uh, 200 rands, right? So to get uh, how many euro that we have there, it's going to be uh, 5.7 euro that will multiply by 4. Why are we multiplying by 4? Because we already rated 5, 50 rand to be 5.7 euro. So 5.7 euro multiplied by 4 will give us the worth of the 200 uh, rand. And that will give us 22.2 uh, 
eight zero euro. So that's the cost of uh, the euro in two hundred uh, rand, and that leads us to the next uh, activities that we have here. Okay, so now let's look at what we have here. We have uh, when we are calculating measures in speed, distance, and time. So we can actually basically rearrange this. Look at what we have. We have a given for formula to be distance equals to speed multiplied by time. So if you want to get the formula for distance, all we just need to do is what? Rearrange the formula distance equals to speed multiplied by time by making speed the subject of the formula. And we have it to be speed equals to distance divided by time. And average uh, speed, when speed is not constant, is calculated as total dis uh, distance over multiplied by, divided by total uh, time. So and we have the illustration here. Distance equals to speed multiplied by time. Time equals to distance divided by speed. And speed equals to distance divided by time. Okay, now we have travel graphs. Now, let's look at this. We have a straight side graph here. The units of the gradient are measured by meter per seconds. Hence, the gradient of a distant time graph represents the speed at which the object is traveling. So, distant time graph illustrates speed at which a particular object is traveling. And for us to calculate our gradient, we have it to be distance divided by time. And we have our illustration here. See the gradient at which the speed is moving. It moves more faster. And then later on, it returns back to the starting uh, point. Okay? Now, this leads us to an uh, example here. Look at this graph. We have to calculate uh, the gradient of this uh, graph. At any given point, we have here. So if you look at this point, we have two points here. We have a point when our distance uh, is measured before between uh, 40 and the time is 4. And we have the other point. This one is decelerating. So we are picking when our distance is 40 and our uh, speed is uh, 4. Okay, now if we have that, we have told us that gradient is what? Gradient, we are representing it with G equals to distance over time. Now that this is our distance is what? Distance is 40 and our time is 4. So what we just need to have is gradient equals to uh, 40 over 4. What I mean that's now 4 goes in 40, that is 10. So we have 10 meter per seconds. And that's the gradient for this uh, time graph. Okay, now let's quickly do that activity that we have here. What is gradient? Gradient is distance over time. Okay, now from this graph, Distance is what? Distance is 40 and time is what? Time is 4. So if you have a gradient to be 40 divided by 4, that's going to be what? 10 meter per second. Okay? Now we have that as our answer. Now let's look at the next uh, activity that we have. Look at this uh, car. A car X is moving at this rate. It moves uh, to the uh, a distance of 60 and it declines, right? Okay, and join another point at B. And look at uh, uh, Y. It's actually moving from uh, time, which is 9.00, and stop at time 11.00. Uh, zero, zero. I will look at the distance. The distance is what? It's 100 kilometers. So we are going to be using, what's formula for distance again? Distance, gradient is what? Distance divided by time. So for the first car, it's moving at distance of 60. But look at the, the starting point is uh, 1. So there is just moving at 1. So it's going to be distance divided by time, which is 60 divided by 1. What is 60 divided by 1? That is 60 meter per second. Now, the other car, car Y, is, the distance is what? 100. But it's moving from uh, 9R to 11R. Now, if you calculate from 9R to 11R, what is the difference? 11 minus 9 will give what? R2. So that is going to the time is going to be two. Now one hundred divided by two. What's going to be that? I mean, two times and two goes into uh, one hundred. That is fifty times. So we have fifty meter uh, per second. So if you look at it, car S is stationary because it doesn't have any specific uh, distance that is being covered. Okay. Now let's look at a uh, speed time graph, acceleration and uh, deceleration. Let's look at this graph here. It will illustrate it. If you look at this from zero. The uh, distance is actually moving, it's moving up to when we have uh, 8 at a meter. So when we get to uh, 8 meter, it stops, it stops moving, and okay, there is a stationary point here, and it's no longer moving. Let's assume it's a car, the car starts not to move again, 
at point uh, uh, eight, yeah, in, in, eight meter, and it stop moving until they get to uh, seven in seconds. So we are seven seconds now. From that seven seconds there, it, ta it started what decelerating back to the original point. So it stopped. It stopped moving, and it now returned back to the starting uh, point. Okay. So that is, this is an ex example of a uh, distant time. Then uh, time trying to accelerate and try to accelerate back to the starting uh, point. Now let's look at. We have a graph here. We have to plot the graph with this table. Okay. Now, considering this table, the time ranges from 0 seconds to 30 seconds, and the speed ranges from 20 meters per second to 30 meters per second. Now, the first one says we should plot a split time graph for the first uh, 30 seconds. Okay. So that implies that when uh, we have time 0 to be 20, uh, 0, the speed is 20. When we have time to be 5 seconds, the speed is 20. When we have time to be uh, time to be 10 seconds, the speed is also 20. If you look at this, this is, also, this is a stationary point. We decide not to move. But if you look at when we have our time to be 15, then the time is 22.5. So there is a speed here until where we get to uh, when we have 30 seconds and the speed is 30 meters per second. Then we have to calculate the accelerating point at the last uh, 20 seconds, which is this is the last 20 seconds. So we are going to be reading from the last 20 seconds to when we have uh, uh, 30 uh, seconds. Okay. Now let's look at what we have as the output here. Now this is the time, the speed uh, time graph. When we have zero, we have our uh, 20. Well, when we have 10, we have 20. And when we have uh, an acceleration that starts moving, okay, from when we have 10, you see that the time, 10 seconds, we still have it at 20. The speed is still 20. But from 12 seconds, it starts moving up from uh, 20 now to 22.2 until we get to 30 uh, seconds. Now, for the other one, they said we should calculate the speed at the last 20 seconds. So it's going to be, if you look at this, it doesn't have a constant speed. So as we said before, it's going to be speed uh, taken minus speed covered divided by time taken minus the time covered. So what is the speed taken for that uh, illustration? The speed taken is what? Is uh, 30, okay? Uh, minus the speed covered. The speed cover is what? 20. When you get to 20, it starts moving up. Now, the time taken is what? The time taken as well is 30. And the time covered, it starts moving up from 10 uh, meter, 10 seconds. If you look at the graph that we have here, when it gets to 10 seconds, then the car or the object starts moving up. So now the time speed taken is going to be uh, 30. Okay. So we have 30. Uh, minus uh, the speed cover, which is what the speed cover is 20. Now, divided by okay, the time taken minus the time cover. So, the time taken here is what 30 minus the time cover, which is 10. Now, 30 minus 20, that is what 10. Okay, divided by 30 minus 20, that is what uh, 20. So, how many times can if you look at it? 10 can go in 10 one time. Now 10 can go in 22 times. So if you look at it, it's going to be 1 over 2 uh, meter per second. So quickly, let's uh, arrange the activities that we have here. It's going to be what? Time taken minus the speed taken minus the speed uh, covered. Okay. Now it's going to be time taken minus the time covered. Okay. The speed taken is what? We have 30 minus 20. Divided by 30 minus 1. 30 minus 20 will give us 10. Now, 30 minus 10 is going to give us 20. Okay. 10 divided by uh, 20, that's going to be 1 over 2 uh, meter per second. So we have 1 over 2 meter per second. Let's check. Okay. Now, let's look at the next uh, activities and examples that we have here. Let's look at this graph. If you look at it, we have non linear travel graph. In this type of graph, the gradient is not. Constant. So to calculate the gradient, a target of a curve at a particular point on the graph is being drawn because the gradient is not constant. Let's look at an example here. 
Ah, at this point, a gradient is being drawn from uh, 14 uh, to 0, and we have the time to be is between 4 and 5, so we can call that 4.5 and stop at what? 1.5. So if you want to calculate this type of gradient, we are going to be calculating the vertical uh, line and the horizontal line. So we are going to be calculating the vertical uh, distance and the horizontal distance. So if you look at it, the height here is what? The height is 14 and the stop at 0. And the time taken is what? 4.5 and the stop at 1.5. So that's going to give us the distance is going to be 14 minus 0 divided by 4.5. Uh, minus 1.5. 4.5 minus 1.5 will give us what? 3. So 14 minus 0 will give us what? That will give us uh, 14. So we have 14 divided by uh, 3. Okay. Now we have 14 divided by 3. Let's see. Now how many times can 3 go in 14? That is 4 times, right? 3 times uh, 4 will give us 12. 14 minus 12 will give us 2. So we have 4 root number 2 over 3, which is a mean. Our fraction and that gives us the answer to the question and let's see our arrangement school uh, this gave take us to the end of this interactive class i want you to subscribe to our channel www.edubi.com for the full interactive uh, content of this uh, class